Failing blower motor. Just opened up the unit. And if you listen carefully, this sounds like it's having a rough time. You can see that the coil is beginning to freeze. And I haven't seen it raise its torque since I started. This is the noise I'm talking about. Ignore the music as I was unable to mute it and listen in. A few days later, the other day, I came here to do a maintenance here on this 2012 air conditioning system. And what I had noticed was the blower motor was acting crazy. Currently, it's on, but what I had diagnosed was a failed motor. So they're going to be replacing it. And we're going to start with uh, shutting off the system, removing these three screws here. We're also going to pull out these two plugs here on the bottom. We'll take the blower housing all the way to the truck as it's easier to work on there. Now our next step is to grab some sanding paper and clean off the shaft of this blower. So cleaning off the shaft like that gets rid of the rough edges so that when it's time to pull these, this motor out, it won't get stuck in there. The next thing I like to use is Big Shot uh, Blaster. This is a penetrating catalyst that makes it easy for it to be pulled out. And we're just going to spray it right into there so that it penetrates through. As it's penetrating through, we're going to go upstairs and clean up the attic unit. Since the oil takes a couple minutes to work, this is a good time to clean up the air handler and make sure it's ready for a new blower motor. Now that this is cleaned up, we're going to go back downstairs and get that uh, blower motor off the wheel. Now that the penetrating oil has gone through this shaft, we can go ahead and loosen this bolt here. It should be flexible enough to go up and down. Here you can see that it's really not. So take off the three bolts that hold the motor in place. This is a motor bracket, this is the motor, and this is the blower wheel. And we are trying to separate the blower wheel from the motor uh, shaft. And we're gonna do that by what you've seen before as well as taking off these bolts. Be careful when taking the motor shaft out of the blower wheel. Now, the motor is out. That came out pretty sweet, to be honest. Um, I've spent hours doing this uh, at some points, and that's because I did not prep. Prep is sandpaper and penetrating oil. Do something else for a little bit, and then go at it. Don't use a strong hammer. Use something with like a rubber mallet so that you don't mushroom the top. It's super important. Now we'll remove the two bolts that hold this flap in. Holding the flap in. So, boom, then you could take this blower wheel out like this, and we're chucking both the blower wheel and the motor, but we are keeping the bracket. We cannot use, lose this bracket. Make sure that you know where the bracket is on the motor so that you put it on in the same place. As I just said, it is important to make sure that the bracket is in the same place on the new motor as it was on the old motor. This is to make sure everything plugs in correctly and fits right. Now that we have our new blower wheel in, we're going to put the shaft back in. So you want to make sure that the flat end of the shaft goes where the bolt is. And it goes right in there like so. Always spin it first. If you hear something like that, you have to realign it. Get out. When you do that, you don't hear any sounds, which means that it's aligned well. The next thing we're gonna do is put the flap back in. Before I put the blower motor back up, I want you guys to note that I cleaned up the air handler 
and I taped this seam. This seam can suck in air and completely bypass the filter. So it's important to make sure that that's done. Now we can get this put back in. The housing slides back into place in the air handler using a rail system. I want to show you guys this cool DeWatt bit that not only makes it straight, but also bend to reach hard to reach places like this here. So now that it, I can bend, I can actually move in any direction and so the three screws are in, we can go ahead and plug this back. All right, it's time to hit the switch and watch this thing operate. So it's very likely that this blower motor began to die um, due to surges. So today we're also going to install a surge protective device on the indoor unit and also one on the outside. What we're going to do is find where the 240 volts are coming in and you can find them here and we also got to find where we're going to ground the unit. So now that we know where it is, we have to make a hole somewhere into this electrical compartment to put this in. Using a step bit, drill into the electrical compartment and be cautious of the wires behind it. We're going to put one on one side of the line voltage coming in, the other on the other side of the line voltage coming in, and the last one is going to go and tie into the grounds. Now this has more than two grounds and that's not allowed. We only can have one ground at a time. So we're gonna take this out and put this end in and then tie in all three somewhere here, just like these are. We are only allowed one wire underneath a terminal at a time. We can wire nut the other wires. And now the Mars surge protector is mounted and then on one side of the 240 volts on the other side of the 240 volts and grounded with just one lead on this terminal we're looking good let's turn this on when turning it on you'll get a green light that tells me that it's doing its job and in five minutes this blower will kick in and we have finished the inside. It's time to go outside and put another surge protector on the outside. The fan doesn't turn on right away. One of the first things you should do is check the thermostat. As you can see here, it is waiting and that's because it's on a five minute delay. So blower is on now, not making any crazy noises and that's good and it sounds so much better. Pull out this disconnect. So the line voltage is still live. Luckily today, I'm only working on the load side. So I'm gonna be extra careful here. But the first thing we'll do is pull off these two wires and the ground wire, this one right here, for the condenser, the load side of the disconnect. It is best practice to go and shut off the breaker for safety. Here you'll see me pull the load wires out and then open up a hole in the disconnect. We will now mount the surge protector. Once that's completed, we take the wires that are coming off the surge protector and cut them in half. The side that is cut will now be used on both the load terminals and the ground terminals. From here, we'll go ahead and strip everything back. Now we'll tie the wires together, starting with the ground wires, the green ones. There are three of them. One is going to the surge protector, the other to the ground terminal, and the last one to the condenser. We'll wire nut them together and then grab a wire from the surge protector, a wire from the disconnect, and a wire from the condenser. Once we wire those together, we have three wires remaining. We'll tie that together as well and close this up. Air turner is back on. Here you can see the green light. If it ever goes red, you know when it goes bad. Um, but other than that, it is running and doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is absorb electrical spikes and send it to the ground. If you found this helpful, leave a like, share this with your friends, and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching Kentech A45.